I would like to start addressing questions to you, uh, whatever we've collected over the course of your talk. Um, Priyanshu asks whether culinary fingerprints were formed only using the flavor molecules or other parts of food as well. Culinary fingerprints uh, entail using information of recipes, ingredients, as well as the flavor molecules, not to mention even the functional group present in the flavor molecule. So it's a multi-layer information that was used for creating uh, uh, culinary fingerprints, Priyanshu. Thank you. Mr. Prasad asks, some doctors recently are speaking about human microbiomes and how post-COVID-19 world, they will be very significant. So how would computational gastronomy help in building up, say, good gut microbiomes? Thanks for asking this question. I obviously hadn't touched upon many aspects of food that included gut microbiome, which happens to be one of the hot topics uh, these days uh, in the food sciences. Uh, quite clearly, uh, in fact, the Weizmann Institution research that I pointed out towards the end uh, indeed uses gut microbiome as one of the factors which goes into the machine learning algorithm. So wherever you are compiling data and analyzing it, that becomes part of computational gastronomy. So as long as you are looking at gut microbiome data, plugging it with other data such as BMI, uh, uh, food diary and others and what kind of diet that you're having thereby making predictions of any kind of health indication that way computational gastronomy can pitch in there that was also a machine learning algorithm and similar kind of algorithms can be built for suggesting what kind of dietary interventions are beneficial against diseases such as inflammatory bowel diseases Crohn's disease etc which are diet linked thank you professor Ganesh uh, one more question. How do you think that the field of psychology, Humaira Fatima asks this, how do you think that the field of psychology and neuroscience add value to computational gastronomy? Okay, so... This is a I, tough one. Tough one, tough one. Though, 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 this has been thought about. This has been thought about and very complex one. Food is a complex topic. So definitely psychology touches upon it. Right, with whom you are having your food, the kind of music or ambience with, in which you are having your food may make a huge difference in your perceptual, uh, how you perceive food. Right, uh, This has been studied incidentally in the field of psychology and somebody suggested me from IIIT Hyderabad that I should collaborate and work on it actually. Right, So I believe that indeed computational gastronomy, which is a broader paradigm, wherever you use computation, in the context of food, it can be called as a computational gastronomy, largely speaking. So I believe there is a uh, there is a much scope for working on psych questions which are derived from psychology, not to mention the neuroscience. In fact, only next week I have a meeting <coughs> with an entrepreneur who is working on neurogastronomy about how food elicits different reactions in different parts of the brain. And can we uh, analyze this in the context of uh, different food molecules that the food has. That's one of the broad question one is asking here. I personally believe there is a huge scope. How soon this is going to happen? I wonder. Uh, will it take time? I believe it will take a little time before we can touch upon it. Among these, I believe neurogastronomy is something which will come up very fast, very soon. Uh, people will, would, would like to find out what are the neural correlates, as they say, of a certain perception. Thereby, if you would like to evoke that sensation, one of the immediate application that I can see here is this. Can you elicit somehow, quote unquote, somehow, uh, sweetness without having sugar in your food or your beverage? If you can do that, you have, you have a million dollars or billion dollar solution probably, right? So this is- A multi-billion dollar solution. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. The next question is, there is molecular gastronomy, which is innovations used by chefs. How is computational gastronomy different from molecular gastronomy? And a second part to the question, if in pairing the negative, the index is negative, does it mean that paired foods together are not healthy? Okay, second question first, I'll take it. Right, 
so first of all this positive and negative food pairing doesn't have anything to do with food being good or bad it is simply a mathematical notion used on a vertical axis something which is random something which is on one side the so called uniform side or positive side and something which is on the other side which is contrasting side that was the only reason the word negative food pairing was used in the research article that we wrote in uh, that is to put a contrast uh, to create a contrast with the positive food pairing uh, but after realizing that many people are misreading it to be having negative health consequences we are now sticking to the terminology of uniform pairing and contrasting food pairing so that was uh, that's the answer to the second question i'm sorry but i lost on the first one i'm very quickly can you repeat that Oh, um, I, I, I got the thing molecular and computational gastronomy now i recall now i recall yeah so molecular gastronomy is primarily a chef's endeavor where a chef is trying to recreate a certain taste using certain molecules like you would like to create a taste of a recipe using only a few molecules for example that is what molecular gastronomy largely entails with uh, that's a very very uh, physical endeavor where we are trying to come put together molecules which will for example it doesn't have palak it doesn't have paneer but it tastes like palak paneer right by putting together some molecules together you would like to do that that's called molecular gastronomy whereas, whereas computational gastronomy is far different it basically creates a framework data driven framework around food and food related attributes the one i told you recipes ingredients the flavors nutrition and health and thereby try to create applications out of it yeah so it's very different from that mr hari haran c asks how would you advise using this research to develop new recipes for recipe developers okay so uh, there are two ways of doing maybe it. you can talk about your um, your favorite recipe which is your baigan ka bharta baigan ka bharta <laughs> okay so uh, okay i have got lot of feedback use uh, including uh, you know chef uh, garima uh, who is a michelin star uh, chef actually herself saying that the food pairing parameter that we have identified she finds it useful while designing her recipes so that's a uh, that's a chimeric job you are using intuition but at the same time you are also trying to use objective parameters given by food pairing index so we have flavor db the database you go to flavor db there is something called food pairing and the food pairing uh, index actually provides you tells you that if i ask what is similar with mango then it will tell me all the ingredients that are similar by virtue of shared flavor molecules similarly it will give it to spinach or tomato or chocolate whatever you want now you can use your intuition that oh let me create a uniform food pairing similar one or contrasting one by choosing ingredients of your choice taking ingredients of your choice putting them together and figuring out whether it works or not i have of course many chef friends and uh, uh, because i conduct a symposium every year so we have already conducted three symposiums chefs come to that they learn from us they go back and do experimentation many have got back to us not all but many have got back to us saying that this tool helps them in shortlisting ingredients that could be good for such creating such recipes so that's a very loose answer for the first first part where you can use your intuition <coughs> second you'll have to wait for it we are in the middle of creating novel recipe generation algorithms which for example would learn from all the biryanis and will come up with a new biryani or 10 templates of biryani and then you can choose one of them which can possibly be in your opinion the best recipe uh, alternative biryani recipe right but that will take a while it's a deep learning machine learning based algorithm that we are trying to design it has to beat a human chef without which we can't say it is a really good one so we are in the middle of doing that so it's a futuristic work so mr hariyan you would have to wait for a while uh, for this to come to reality so professor ganesh this is a lot like you know maybe building perfumes or maybe building very complex perfumes right you have a yeah. top note you have a middle note you have a bottom note yeah. so if you're going to do like a template for biryani you want to know what it smells like when you open the pot you want to know what it tastes like what immediately hits you what kind of acidity hits you and then the texture the umami texture that you feel across the board 
And uh, yeah, it, um, we can't wait. Um, the chefs that you were talking about who attend your symposium, what tools do they use when they um, attend your symposium and um, go back to their own to experiment? Most of them used positive food pairing principle. That seems to be still a dominating principle incidentally. So they essentially went to FlavorDB. They, for example, looked at chocolate and what are the ingredients that pair or have most similarity with chocolate. And while creating a chocolate based recipe, they use those ingredients as possibility. And wherever they found the exception, they actually got back to me and also told me that, look, this is not working well, despite it being so much similar. It's not really working. My customers are not liking it. Just to give an example. Uh, and is, yeah. this, um, is this database available to the general public? Correct. FlavorDB uh, is available as a browser, browsable uh, database for non-commercial purposes. As long as you use it for making some player playing around, etc., it is available. For uh, commercial purposes, uh, uh, purposes it is not available just like that. You will have to make a contract or something. Thank you. Now, Mr. Priyanshu asks, on what lines the field of gastrophysics and Professor Charles Senses intersect with computational gastronomy. I didn't even know something like gastrophysics existed, but today I learned. Gastrophysics is more on lines with the molecular gastronomy, I would say, pretty much. Whereas computational gastronomy is heavy, very heavy duty on data and computation. Right? I would rather collect data coming from Spencer's lab and use it for doing some analytics at my end. That's computational gastronomy. If I were to create a lab to put together ingredients, molecules, uh, to create a desirable recipe or a flavor, that would be Spencer's lab. That would be molecular gastronomy or gastrophysics. So gastronomy and gastrophysics are pretty much similar, uh, except that physics principles are used a lot heavily uh, you know, uh, when, when they are trying to design a new recipe, such as that they do in Spencer's lab. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot again. You very cleverly avoided my question with regards to your favorite recipe and how you've played around with it. <laughs> Trust me, I, I still remain a very novice uh, cook. Uh, I, I fail a lot. Uh, and uh, while my wife takes some intuition from what I do, my, uh, you know, my mother hasn't done as much, but my wife has done it. But I am still playing and trying to figure out how do I change Bagan Ka Bharta in a recipe which is more... Uh, or at least equally likable by changing some of the ingredients by using food pairing principles. But so far I have not been able to change my liking. Uh, what it is primary liking is with the, the, the basic, the classic vegan uh, kavartha that hasn't changed with any of the food pairing that I've done so far. Do you think this is um, something to do with nostalgia as well? Because you've grown up eating it. Yeah, and uh, it is something that um, I know that we've touched upon when we spoke earlier with regards to the flavor molecules, both olfactory as well as gustatory, evoking nostalgia and that also being therapeutic in some aspects. It is eminently possible. As I said, it's a complex topic. Um, uh, you know, those who have grown up, there is a factor of... Um, nostalgia and more like uh, there is another word for it uh, basically uh, you have uh, uh, you've been used to that particular taste and odor and aroma like somebody who has grown up eating bhanganga bharta done in chulha would not like it as much on a gas probably right it's that kind yes, of a difference exactly. it makes actually right so uh, it's a complex topic food is very complex what we are trying to do is to uh, take out the top layers only. That's why I mentioned that it is probably still 18th century physics or 17th century physics, very early stages, very basic principles is what we are trying to figure out from whatever we have, we have available with us. That's wonderful. Now, I have one more question. When the chefs come back to you saying that, um, you know, this didn't work, was there one particular example that, uh, you know, stood out? I can't recall that particular example, but it was regarding chocolate. Uh, uh, with chocolate, one of the ingredients that was coming on the top in the third or fourth uh, number uh, in terms of chocolate pairing with something else, that's something else. Uh, I was told, I, I have a written record of that somewhere. The person wrote a message to me uh, saying that this ingredient didn't really work well. So I do have uh, that particular uh, uh, example, but I don't know the, the name of it right now. 
and there and, could be many more yeah sorry and are you um, are you uh, investigating why despite it being so high up on the flavor or the food pairing index it's just not working well i looked at it if there is an easy answer to it by looking at its flavor composition or some unusual molecule which might be present which is giving an unpleasant odor or aroma etc but there was nothing so easy to come by if you look at flavor db you will come to realize that it's a very very complex database it gives you molecules and molecules is odor what kind of odor or a taste the ingredient molecule has so it is very difficult to pin down uh, in the absence of additional data such as concentration of the molecule which is not available so uh, in chocolate for example this molecule what concentration it is available in practically it is not available for every ingredient we have around 1000 odd ingredients in our database so in the absence of large amount of such data it is impossible to uh, investigate to uh, and pin down about what made that you know that possible thank you mr hari haran has another question for you uh, i think this is similar or it's just riding off of what you've just said right now do the flavor molecules of ingredients also change based on the method of cooking of if course. yes how is it accounted for in the flavor db good question a very good question so uh, of course flavor molecules change their composition their nature when they are processed depending on whether they are boiled or fried or sauteed uh, or they are raw they are obviously very different from each other uh, in flavor db flavor db is not cooking related database it's flavor molecules is repository so uh, natural molecules as available in raw ingredients is what is reported in flavor db if you ask me for boiled beef uh, and uh, fried beef uh, boiled chicken for some of these ingredients we do have their molecules available with us but for most of them remaining 1000 odd uh, ingredients we don't have their uh, transformed form in fact one of the major agenda if one were to do some interesting gastronomical project is to do this is to take an ingredient put it through some popular protocols that it goes through boiling frying sauteing roasting etc and look at the flavor composition using gas chromatography kind of techniques what was the original flavor what are the flavors later uh, and make a list of those and create a database of that that itself would do wonders to this area of computational gastronomy propelling it towards the future trying to create new recipes out of it actually in the absence of that we are heavily limited so to answer a question, the question of mr hariharan uh, we don't have that data in flavor db available with us not right now but right. you know i'm sure you'll have in terms very excited to put chicken or mutton or beef through you know the entire processes that you said whether it's boiling or braising or sauteing or even sous vide for that matter or deep frying and then you know um get get, get the um database get the molecules that are required and then put them into the database yeah yeah we we intend to do that and one of the you know lacunas of or shortcomings of being in a area such as computational gastronomy uh, as a as an active researcher i can tell you is that if you work on cancer or diabetes you will get million of uh, funders whether it is from dst department of science and technology department of biotechnology etc but when you are working on food and that and you develop a new area uh, as a pioneer of computational gastronomy everybody claps saying that wonderful you have done amazing thing nobody would have done this you have spent 5 years so far working on this area etc but when it comes to funds practically none so this needs a lot of money uh, to be able to do this uh, characterization of flavor pro profile uh, of different type of ingredient needs a lot of money so we need funder funder either is coming from government agency which realizes the huge potential based on nutrition and health of the country or it should come from private industry you know private uh, labs such as industry they should be realizing its value and should be putting their money it has not happened so far so you you you're looking at exploring personalized nutrition and intersecting with computational gastronomy correct yeah very much so pranav uh, is asking um what about the food pairing in sweets is it similar to food or different in regards to flavors you mean sweet meats uh, yeah deserts basically deserts yes yeah, and yeah. i guess he's talking about the indian context which might be heavily dairy based and uh, you know have sugar but 
I think actually you could maybe talk about the spices that are involved here and how mm-hmm. different they can be. Yeah. You know what? There are so many ideas that have been popped at me, including, for example, dishes which are made as naivedams, the in temples, for example, right? The whole of all of them. Can you investigate those itself? You know, as a reporter of recipes, <laughs> apart from <laughs> others, <coughs> tribal recipes as a set of recipes, and similar such subsets of recipes have been suggested, including desserts, right? To answer your question, I have not done the analysis of this. Uh, uh, to in the context of desserts so i don't know the answer we we haven't done specifically for desserts what is the food pairing index and how different it is from other dishes we haven't done that yet okay thank you very much i think uh, we've run through our time uh, professor ganesh would you like to leave us with any last thoughts um hopefully uh, to do with uh, how we can maybe apply flavor db Uh, in our own everyday lives from today onwards sure so one is flavor db another is recipe db those of you who are interested more in practical interest uh, practical applications of computational gastronomy you may start investigating these databases to look at what are the flavor composition of different ingredients that go into our daily recipes in my opinion that will be an eye opening exercise to begin with just to find for example that how sulfurous compounds are so much dominant in uh, onion or similar ingredients which have pungent aroma that itself is a learning exercise in my opinion uh, secondly you should be able to do food pairing by using the food pairing app which is part of flavor db and thereby come up with some interesting pairing uh, by which you can change your recipes and hopefully come up with some novel tweaks in the recipes that you like already probably and if you do so don't forget to write to me i have my email id written on the database so do that and of course if things don't work things are not working according to your intuition or the logic as i have proposed don't hesitate to write back to me also and if you have any other adventurous applications remember this is a database that i have created from primarily from academic endeavor and has ended up becoming of applied nature right and similarly recipe db so we have database of 118000 118000 recipes with us which we have broken down into its comp- uh, elements ingredients quantity units blah blah so use it uh, you know find ways by which you can see uh, you can search recipes show me all recipes which have <clears throat> you know let's say peanut in it from brazilian cuisine which have peanut in it but doesn't have chili in it from brazilian cuisine or whatever cuisine that you would like to search for you can make such queries by using recipe db and probably you might hit upon some interesting recipe these are real recipes so eventually you will reach a link which can take you to the original database on allrecipes.com or geniuskitchen.com etc in addition to giving you insight into the recipe about what is the composition of the recipe so those are the couple of things that i would suggest to you and further finally final thoughts is this uh if two things uh, two forks one is of academic nature if you think of some interesting ideas uh, which can be run on with the in computational gastronomy domain feel free to write to me that this is an interesting thought or interesting experiment that can be done can you please work on it like the deserts for example was one of the case right so can you look at food pairing index of re- deserts and compare it with dishes right you can come up with such thoughts and th- finally if you see there is an industry partner that you know of among the audiences who can be of value to me in terms of partnering uh, feel free to connect me uh, so that we can take it forward apart from you yourself coming up with propositions of course i can be your partner over there we um, run the hodavar and we primarily work on nostalgia one of okay. the things that um, works very well for us apart from the health aspect of the bar is that we use jaggery and we caramelize it in uh, butter or ghee because we clarify the butter to make ghee and it immediately sends everybody back home to daddy's uh, laddus okay or chickies so right. yeah i would love to i'd love to collaborate with you this is very exciting for me and uh, crowdsourcing flavor libraries um will be fantastic i think for uh, uh, your research as well as for our um, enhanced knowledge with regards to flavors 
From a nutritional aspect, though, uh, does FlavorDB have uh, the nutritional aspect mapped to it? Uh, Recipe DB has it, uh, some uh, information of uh, nutritional uh, value that, mm -hmm. uh, for example, there is a recipe, there are ingredients. What is the okay. nutritional value of that particular ingredient it has been mm -hmm. estimated. There can be mistakes because this has been done using a machine learning algorithm because we had to do it for 1,18,000 recipes, right? So we did it for a few of them, trained it. So there is a protocol which has gone behind it. So using that, we have estimated the nutrition value. So they are available. Sure. Um, one last thought before I um, end this session with you. Uh, NIN has a very comprehensive nutritional database, especially with regards to Indian foods and recipes. Um, I advise people to also take a look at that and see if there's any discrepancies. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Ganesh. What a pleasure having you here. I really enjoyed your talk and I'm really looking forward to Gastronomica and I'm really looking forward to um, hopefully yelling out to Alexa that, uh, you know, this is what I have in my fridge. Tell me what I can make with the best food pairing index possible. <laughs> Indeed, my pleasure too. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah.